Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we are going to show how to use the Parasolid feature on the Prototrack RMX. For this video and presentation, I'm going to be using the offline programming system because it's easier for us to capture everything that I do on the screen from the TV. And then, of course, uh, as I go through all of this, you're going to find that I will refer to things that are different. For instance, if you have a touchscreen computer, or if you have it on your actual control, then you'll be able to use your fingers for all the gestures and all that kind of stuff for selections. Uh, because I'm doing it on the offline, I'm gonna be using my mouse for those reasons, so I'll point those out, okay? So why don't we get started? First of all, you'll see I'm here at the home screen, and what I'm going to do is go to the program in and out mode, and I'm already in my XT samples here, and what I wanna do is just select one of these parts to make my sample. So I'm gonna select this one down here, and once I open it, it's a little bit different than our other model in the SX products because it doesn't open automatically. What happens is when I go to the program mode, you'll see in here that here's my program name like it normally would be. And I'm just going to select go to begin. And here is my model of my part. OK, now before I get too far into this, I want to explain a few other things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this side of the piece part. OK, and before I get too far into this, I want to explain a couple things. So. Um, as, I'm ex as I'm doing some of this stuff, I could just use my fingers and I could certainly just touch and manipulate, make it smaller, make it bigger, make it rotate. What it's asking me here is to select a part of the, a part of the piece part that's going to be zero and facing up, okay? So I'm gonna select A right there. That puts it up so I can select this part. If I want to, because it's a solid model, I can cut any of the six sides just by selecting which side is pointing up, highlight it, and then use it as A. Okay, the next thing this is gonna allow me to do is to rotate the part. So depending on how I wanna hold it, I can change it by 90 degrees each time. And the last one would be if I had a part that came in in an isometric view or something like that and I needed to align it to the x-axis, then I would simply click on a certain line in my piece part, go to align to x-axis and it would flip the part so that it fits accordingly, okay? In this case, we don't need that feature. Um, I'm just gonna push go to continue here. And in here, you'll see here's my isometric drawing and here's my standard 2D drawing. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select two things. First of all, I'm gonna to go to highlight here and say that is my absolute zero. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is determine where I wanna call my part zero for X and Y. And I'm gonna use A here, which is the intersection of two lines or arcs. So select A, touch the top line, it highlights, touch the side line, it highlights, and now you'll see my zero reference is right here. You'll also notice that as I move the cursor around, the X and Y numbers are changing, so it knows where it is at all times. There's a few other features in here, like I could offset my zero if I wanted to have this in a block and maybe I wanted zero over here. I could go to offset zero and just punch in the dimensions from the edge of my part to where my zero is gonna be. I can also turn the gestures off if I don't wanna be using them. Um, I can do things like hide the prompt. So if it gets in the way, I can just close it off like this. It's another new feature that's really nice. And once I'm ready and I know where I wanna go, I'm just gonna push go to continue, okay? So here you'll see that I have some options to manipulate my piece part. For instance, I can add lines or create new points. And a lot of times I may wanna create a new point for something like this. So if I select new point and I go to any intersection, it will highlight and then allow me to drag a line wherever I might wanna put it. So maybe I wanna have a line out here that's gonna allow me to walk onto the piece part when I start machining. And maybe I even wanna have another one out here when I walk off the end of the part. Okay, what add a line does is it allows me to connect a line between two different parts. For instance, if I clicked on the new pieces that I just made, it will draw a line between them. If I don't need something that I've made, I can simply go to undo. And the other features that I have in here are to hide geometry. If there's something that's in the way, I can double click it, it'll disappear. I can break up the geometry if I need to. Um, I can inquire about geometry. So for instance, if I click on a circle, it's gonna tell me where the center of that circle is and what the radius is, okay? Uh, if I click on something like a line, it's gonna give me the beginning and the ends of the line. So that way I can determine <clears throat> some of the information I might need as I move forward, okay? So I'm gonna push continue again. And now what you'll see in here is that I've actually got uh, all of my can cycles in here and it's asking me what I want to do first. So uh, what I'm going to do, this part is pretty deep, so I'm not going to use as many cuts or pecs as I normally would just to keep it short and simple, but you'll get the effect for how I'm doing this. So let's say the first thing I want to do is drill some holes. I would select drill 
And then when I come in here, I would just highlight each of the holes. So you notice here as I touch them, they all turn purple, like so. And then when I click up here at the top where it says event, you'll see that most of my information is already in. In my defaults, I've already selected that any time I do a drilling event, I want it to be a drill, but I do have the drop down menu where I could change it to a bore or to a tapped hole. Okay, now what I'm going to do is click down here on the Z Rapid, and in our DXF features, you would just punch in those numbers. The great part I have in the solid model is that I can get that information from the model itself. So, what I'm going to do is click up on here where it says View Solid. And in the View Solid, you'll notice here that now I see the part, and my Z Rapid is actually the part that's highlighted. And down here at the bottom, it says, do you want to use that number with an offset or without an offset? Before I answer this question, I want to explain how you get your offsets. So I'm going to go to the defaults page. And in the defaults page, if I go all the way to the bottom, which normally I'd be scrolling with my fingers, right? You'll see in here, Parasolid Z offset. So I have my rapid set at 100 thousandths above the part. Maybe I want that to only be 50. So I change it to 50 thousandths. Here I've got my through mill depth and my through drill depth at 30 thousandths each. That works good for me, so I'm going to close and leave it as that. So here where it's asking me the Z rapid question and I'm highlighted, all I'm going to say is with an offset and you'll notice there's the 50 thousandths. Okay, now it's asking me what about how deep you want to go. Now I'm skipping the center drilling part just to keep it easy, you get the hint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the part over and I'm going to highlight the opposite side and say with an offset. And it's going to go by the diameter of the holes plus the 82 degrees that's on my drill bit. And it's going to figure out exactly how deep it has to go to get that drill bit all the way through the bottom. Now it's asking me the simple questions. How many pecs are there? Let's say there's five, right? If I'm in RPM, let's program this at 300 and tell it I'm going to go five inches a minute and I'm going to use tool number one. Okay. So what you'll see in here is that all of these holes are already completed. So when I click on the event key again, they're all green now, and it says, what would you like to do next? So if I want to do something like a simple profile, I would say, okay, I want to make a profile. I want to chain pieces together. Again, I would be touching all this stuff with my hands if I was on the control. But in this case, I'm going to use the mouse. So I'm going to select the first piece. The second piece, you'll see it highlights the entire profile. I go to event, go back to Z rapid, and once again, I go back to my solid. Now, every time I go to my solid, it's always going to be in the state I left it. So I'm going to flip it back over, go back to this top part, say with an offset. That puts my 50 at the top. And then for my actual depth of this part, I need to cut the whole part, right? So I'm going to go back to the bottom, say with an offset. Gets me a little bit past the bottom of the part. My defaults are already set up to climb mill, so I am cutting with tool left. So I'm going to leave that where it is. I'm only going to put one cut in here, but normally I would put as many cuts as I want to get to the bottom of the part, okay? This will just keep it a little bit faster in the way we do it. My finish cut, if I had my default set up for an automatic finish cut, it would be in there. I do not, so I'm just going to put 10 thousands. It remembers the last RPM, but I really would be running more at about 1,200. Um, my finish RPM, I'm just going to keep that the same. And then my plunging feed rate, 5 inches is good for me. I'm going to cut it at 20 inches and I'm going to finish it at 15. Okay, I'm going to be using tool number two now, which is going to be an end mill. And my finish tool could be different, but in this case, tool number two will work. Okay, so when I click on the event key, you're going to see I'm back here. Now this is all green. I'm going to show you one other thing. I'm going to show you how to make this part a pocket. So I go to pocket. It says, do you want to chain? And I say yes. And then I click the first piece of the pocket. Now the next piece that I click is going to determine whether I climb mill or conventional mill. I want to be tool left, which means I'm going to go, uh, whoops, the wrong way, this way. That highlights the entire shape of the pocket. I go to event and I'm back with the same kind of information, right? So anytime I need anything out of the solid, I just go to view solid to get it. So back to view solid. This time I'm not going through the part, right? So I'm still going to start up here at the top of the part with an offset. But now I'm going to click on the floor of the part and say no offset, and that's going to get it cut to the exact dimension that I need my pocket to be. Okay, the same thing works if I'm doing a counter bore or a counter sink. I just pick up that particular surface and then just tell it without an offset, and I'll get right to the depth I need to be. I'm going to keep this at one pass again. All right, and I'm going to put in my finish cut again. And the RPMs, sometimes you'll find that it remembers them. Sometimes it asks you to plug them in again. I'm just going to plug them in again. 
whoops, wrong number. And then my feed rates. And I'm gonna use tool number three, okay? So when I click that, you'll see that that's the part that I've done so far. Now here's one of the really cool things we've added. I have a program button at the top. So at any time I can actually switch from the DXF to what I actually have in my events here, you'll see in my program. So you'll see as I swipe through here, it highlights each piece of it. Sorry, sometimes the mouse doesn't always swipe so well. And it'll show me each thing that I wanna do. The next thing I can do is I can come over here to my tool table and I can tell it about those tools that I'm going to use in this program. Now, as you can see here, and you've seen in other videos when I teach how to do the tool setup, nothing's been done yet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go in here and pretend to touch off my reference tool. I'm gonna to tell about the tools I'm using. So first thing I'm using is a drill bit. Okay, and I'm gonna tell it it's high speed, tell it there's two flutes, and then I'm gonna tell it that it's a quarter inch. I touch it off the same part. Normally there would be a reference number in here for the difference in length, but because I'm on offline, I don't have that. I'm gonna to go to my end mill. I'm gonna use a finish end mill. I tell it it's carbide. Tell it I'm using a three fluted end mill and it's a one inch in diameter. Okay, touch that one off. And my last tool is also a finish end mill, but it's gotta be a bit smaller. So I'm gonna to go to carbide here, three flutes. And this time I'm gonna use just a quarter inch tool. Okay, touch that off. One of the other things I can do from this screen is of course, um, if, I'm in, uh, if I'm in the right place where I wanna set up a library, I can add these tools to a library. In this case, I know you guys have seen how that works in the other video, so I can skip that too. And now here is my completed part. Now, if I wanted to change anything about this part, I can change it in the program. But the nice part is after I make some changes, if I wanna go back and say, I wanna select this circle, I can continue to add to my program by bouncing back and forth from program to the solid model. Once I'm done here, I've already got my tools set up. So what I'm gonna do is go into the setup mode. And in here, I'm gonna set my reference position. I'm just gonna to pretend to do that too. And then I'm gonna check my tool path. And you'll see here that it'll process in a minute and look at all the information I gave it and determine how to make the best use of those drilled holes, my finished pocket, as well as my profile, okay? If I push return and I wanna use, whoops, I wanna use verify, then what I would do is go into here and decide what size my stock actually is, okay? It does it automatically if you don't produce it, and I think what we have in here will be good enough except for the top of the part is actually Z0. So I'm gonna push return, go to make part, and then go to verify part, okay? Um, and I'll just show it the fast way because it'll take less time for the video and to show part. So in here, you'll see here's my completed part, right? I can still rotate just like I do anywhere else in the RMX. And this shows me my holes that go through, my pocket that goes down to this floor and the shape around the outside of the part. So here, that looks good. I push exit. And the last thing I would have left to do if needed would be to save this program as an actual PT4 program. Okay, so I go back to my program in and out mode. And in here, there's my part number. And when I go to save file, you're gonna see that it added the same number in here as a PT10 program. Okay, from there, I could actually save this as a PT4 program and run it in an older control or something like that. But this should give you a pretty basic idea on how exactly to use the Parasolid in the RMX. It's very simple, it's way more powerful than it was before. And again, most of the functions you'll be doing just selecting parts by touching the screen with your fingers. Okay, I hope this has been beneficial to you. I enjoyed teaching it to you. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. And as always, keep on tracking.